Well, welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Aaron Dante. What's up, what's up, what's up? Were you surprised that I knew how to say your last name? Not at all, not at all, brother. No, no, I appreciate you having me on your pod. I really do. You know, I've listened to a couple of them. You've been, you've been crushing it, man. So keep doing your thing. Keep doing it. I appreciate that, man. Well, Aaron, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and if you want what you do professionally. Okay, so uh, professionally, I work as a consultant for the state of Maryland. I do real estate work, so um, I'm always everywhere. You know, I'm always doing work um, from Ocean City to Frederick, Maryland. That's, I mean, I could be as far as north as Aberdeen to Southern Maryland to uh, Solomon's Island down that way. So I'm everywhere. Um, And a little bit about myself. I live in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, I've been here for since 2005. Um, And I'm married. I have a son. And uh, I live in Walterson. It's a little area in in Baltimore. More people know about Hamilton, Lauraville. They know the area pretty well. Walterson is like a little, little, little area inside the area. So it's pretty cool. You know, what's awesome is the fact that I've talked to people from in California or Australia or another country, but I love talking to someone that's near where I live because me and you know damn well what it means to have a crab feast. Oh, man. Oh, man. I love crabs, bro. Like, I had my first crabs um, two weeks ago. First crabs of the season two weeks ago, man. So good. There's, so n- there's no better feeling than like, all right, so this is a big question here. When you're eating crabs, do you prefer to pick your own or do you want someone to pick them for you? Oh, hell no. That's, I, 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 get, you know, if anybody is a pick their own, pick your own meat. Exactly. I'm not picking. It's like going to Maine or you going, going up to Northeast and saying somebody pick my own lobster for me. No, that's part of the sport is picking your crabs and getting nasty. Your fingers disgusting and smelling that old bay. And you're just like, this is heaven. This was all about. This is literally the having a crab feast is literally the definition of how we can fix this world. Because first of all, it's cutting off technology. You can't touch your phone because you got old bay all over your fingertips. And then also it's about perceiving the goal, no matter the pain, because you got to break open to get those crab meats and you're going to cut your fingers. It's going to happen and it's going to suck. I love it. I love it. You know, you, you're, you hit it right on the head, man. I, uh, I really enjoy eating crabs, man. Uh, you, and you're right. I like, that's one of the things I preach on my podcast, No Picks of the Dark, is basically be in the moment. Live in the moment. Get off your cell phone. Enjoy each other's company. I like what you said. We're not, you're not, you're not texting anybody. You're not calling anybody. You're eating crabs. You're conversating. You're talking about life. You know, you, you, your hands are so dirty. Only thing you want to touch is your beer. That's about it. That's the only thing, and crabs. So I really like, I like living in the moment. That's what it's all about in life. You know, we are so addicted to our cell phones. Whatever happened to just putting them down, just enjoying each other's company and learning about each other? You know, I don't want to learn about you on Instagram. I want to learn about you because that's the fake world to me. Twitter, I don't know. I call it, I call it Twitter the devil's playground. It, it really I, I, is. It, I, know, use, I use Twitter as for jokes and everything, but, you know, it's an important thing that I think a lot of people kind of woke up to during quarantine, even though we, we had a lot more time to spend on our phones. I feel like a lot of people sort of realized, and like, holy shit, like, I'm actually related to somebody, and they live inside my house, and I can actually sit and have a dinner with them. Uh, you know, kids nowadays, you know, the whole thing, Uber, all those types of stuff, it's um, amazing to have all these things out there, but I feel like it's definitely harmed because we've missed a lot of the main basics to conversation. Like how many times do you have a conversation with someone in the world and they don't even know how to respond? It's always just an autopilot answer. You're like, what are you doing to me? You're, you're killing me. Man. So I, I would tell you when I was growing up, my parents were like, you can't stay in the house. You got to go outside and play with the kids, you know, neighborhood. And we always went out and we knew everybody in our neighborhood. We needed kids in the rival neighborhood. We would play football against them every week. We would play basketball against them every week. Now, I see kids, you know, with their handheld devices and that's how they communicate, you know? And it's, 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 you know, it's sad how the world has changed for us. But again, like you said, for the crab piece, that's all about communication. You got to talk to people. You are forced to talk to people. And I, I love that concept of crab piece. And, you know, for y'all, for, I mean, I love good crab feast. I just haven't been to one this year, but we're going to make it happen, though. Yeah, we'll definitely sure. make it happen. I'm telling you, me, you, and then obviously Rob, Lee, you need to sit down and get a crab feast going. Imagine that conversation. Oh, man, shout out to Rob Lee. That's my man from Baltimore. I love him, man. He's, he's he, you know, he was one of the first people who reached out to me in Baltimore and was like, man, I like what you got going on. Let, let's sit down and talk. And to this day, me and him always talk once a day. 
either, either or Instagram or whatever. Just, you know, throwing ideas back and forth about podcasting, you know, just things he's gone through. He's been there for like 10 years, right? Yeah. It's about 10 years, something like that. So we call, they call, we, they call him the pod father in Baltimore. Well, look, you, I mean, you guys do kind of similar things towards your podcast, which I kind of want you to explain your podcast a little bit, but more on the lines of like highlighting Baltimore a little bit too, kind of the people that are around there doing something or have something going on. And I think that's important because, I mean, you rarely ever hear anybody say anything good on the news when it comes to a place like Baltimore or when it comes to like even my town's under huge flack right now just because we got a bunch of people from, you know, all the tourists that come down here in Ocean City. Well, we have riots constantly. And I'm like, if you keep highlighting the bad stuff on the news, then nobody's ever going to want to come here anymore. And then nobody's ever going. I mean, that's good for some locals, but not good for, you know, the economy, the businesses. I mean, so many people, we didn't have J1 students come down this summer. You know what that means? Our businesses on the boardwalk just shut down. We're like, we, 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 we can't, our, we're running our employees dry here. I will tell you, um, you know, it's interesting to talk about negativity. And um, when I first started my podcast, so again, No Kick to the Dark podcast, folks, I wanted to tell positive stories about what's going on in the world. You know, like you said, negative news sells. It does. I, I get it. People like, people, they know how to work on people's anxiety and fears. And what I wanted to do was transform it into a positive thing. What's going on in Baltimore? Entrepreneurs that you probably don't even know, they live in your own neighborhood. They live five minutes away. You know, today I highlighted um uh, Shaquen Holmes is an author, children's book author. I did a, I did her opening release. My podcast was live, which was amazing. Um, I've done uh, Nicole. Uh, Nicole, um, her name's Nicole. She does cashew ice cream. On a local entrepreneur, plant based ice cream, man. I mean, think about all those people who are lactose intolerant, like myself. I can't eat a good blue bell or a good regular ice cream or you know Hagen Dodge. I can, but I'll feel like. Shit, I, I feel you on Sorry. the lactose. I'm, I'm the same way with Ben and Jerry's. If I eat that, then I'm, I'm shitting up a storm. It's not right. Bad. Right. So, I mean, and you have all these people that like I'm highlighting and I had this uh, new lift, new follower who was like, you got to check out this pod, man. Like you got to check the pod out. And I was so excited that this person who I had never met gave me a huge shout out and was like, you know, he's, he's on source. He's like on the Baltimore scene. And I, and I appreciate the love, and that's what it's all about. Ex exploring those stories that nobody wants to talk about. Let's talk about the guy who's out there who's working hard, trying to help the kids in the community. Let's talk about, you know, the guys in West Side Baltimore. All the negativity, anybody, anybody can be negative. You and I can be negative right now. But let's talk about positive. A little bit hard to be positive. And that's one thing I want to highlight about Baltimore in general is being it's a very great, it's a great place to live. I don't, I don't worry. I don't stress about Somebody come, you know, I don't stress about those things that you see in the news, you know. And the podcast, interesting enough, didn't start off that way. It was first start off with all my college friends and all their positive stories. And then it transformed into the Baltimore scene. Yeah, that's kind of what happened with me when I first started. I was doing people that, you know, they were all in person and I wouldn't post every single day. It would just be once every couple, like maybe a week or something. It was so hard to get people to actually come into your house who have never met you before. <laughs> like I'm inviting random strangers on the side of the street. Like, hey, you want to come over to my house and do a podcast? Like I would literally meet them at the door. And I'm like, no introductions are safe for the podcast. And then we turn it on. And then I would be like, hey, my name's Robbie. It's nice to meet you. And then we go from there. But, um, you know, that's where technology kind of, helped out a little bit but i think the factor is is like everybody's doing something everybody's got their own hustle on there but the people that don't get spotlighted that much at least by major news corporations is if they're not doing something completely outrageous and that's where you see with other podcasters or other people that really try and talk shit on other people only on the concept of they feel like that negativity is going to get them more views because people love conflict it's the only reason why jersey shore was so freaking popular mm -hmm. besides looking at jay wow's boobs you were so happy happy that you know you can find a person eating a pickle and then beating the crap out of somebody that was like that that was the that was the amazing part of the show and i'm like i mean same thing with like uh when you uh message you're like rob gave you the or gave me the nod for you to come on to my show and i'm like because every time somebody sends a message to somebody it's always freaking negative and it's always like what does this person want from me let me check them out first and then everyone's kind of afraid to open up or come on to somebody or do something and that's just because as society we've just learned to target people instead of help and i'm like let's not do that and, and I love what you said. I mean, 
I am very hesitant to come on anybody else's show. It's weird. Um, I guess you're the second person I've been on the show, actually. Second person I've actually been on somebody else's show. And I just very hesitant just because everything is with society going on. And we're not going to get into all that craziness. But I had a lot of people reaching out. Hey, I want to talk to you all of a sudden. I'm like, whoa, whoa, where's all this coming from? I had 15 requests for podcast interviews at the beginning of June, all the way through the first, through July. 15. Wow. And like, what's, what's your story behind it? You know, and then when you listen to your pod, you're like, this doesn't match up with my values. This doesn't match up with anything I'm doing. I'm good. I, you know, I'm good. But um, that's why I like I like your pod. It's, you know, it's, it's free flowing, and I like hearing what you have to say. And, and I really appreciate you having me on. It's an honor and pleasure to come on your podcast. You know, first and foremost. So, um, but I wanted to shout out this. So this young lady, her name is Flower Field Paper. This is crazy. This is who I was talking about earlier. She said, if you if you're from Maryland, please take a listen to Aaron's podcast. It's eye opening. It's inspiring. It centers around small business and creatives in our community. I found so many new business people support through him. Such a good episode, Baltimore Pride, importance and uplifting the community. Plants, home, garden, composting, transforming the community for a brighter future. This is from a young lady I've never met. And that's a beautiful thing. That's, so it's impacting people. And that's why every day I, I, I think of stories. I think of podcasts, like what I'm going to do. Like right now, I'm in midst of i mean i don't know when this is going to drop but i have a new season coming out and that's what i've been doing like uh, you've been asking hey what you up to i took some time off because i've recorded over 15 recordings for a new season already that's how i do my recordings i do them all early so this I can is go the back. part where i can't give you empathy because i record a lot and i post <laughs> every day so i to me when <laughs> when a podcaster somebody says like oh i got this editing I got this recording i'm like i have to edit too there are sometimes I, <laughs> I i put up a podcast where someone doesn't like um has a severe anxiety disorder or something i edit out all the pauses that are, i mean it could be in two hour episode that goes 45 minutes when I get done with it, because I never want to make somebody look bad. It, there's no freaking point in that. Cause then they're not going to enjoy it. I want you to be able to listen to it. I mean, on my personal Instagram, all the feedback I've ever gotten from any of my episodes is all posted on there because I just love seeing it. I mean, it's definitely a stroke to the ego, but at the same time, it's like a whole thing of like, I just love people that enjoy having a good time. And I feel like we could all be doing exactly what I'm doing or what you're doing if we just took the time to have a conversation, but nobody ever wants to take that risk because that feeling of where could it end up is the scariest thing for everyone. And I've, I, I remember I had a guy reach out who was like, Oh, I want to talk about this, this and that. And I was like, when we went down a dark path, I'm not going to go that route. So I appreciate you being honest up front. And like I said, you, your podcast is rocking, man. You're doing, you're doing big things out there. Keep well, on doing it. What do you typically, um, let, let's say, like, when you're doing the podcast, like what, besides coming up for the idea for it, what do you typically try and do when you have a guest on? Do you search out? Do you do research on this guest? Do you go around the local areas and try and find out who's doing what and when? That's a great, that's a great question. So before pre-COVID, before COVID, um, I record out of this place called Function Coworking Space. So I don't record out my house. I record out of the studio. Uh, it's like a coworking space down the street from my house. So I have my own little area where I can record and do my thing. What I normally used to do before was I would have coffee or meet them for tea before I even meet with them, before I even record, because I'm like, let me feel, feel like we, if we vibe, because you, as you know, if the vibe isn't there, it's going to be a long podcast. I've had a few. <laughs> it's going to be a long, so where I normally do is shout out to Zeke's Coffee, which is down from my house, big time Baltimore coffee place. And um, we meet there and I, and I, and when guests, when I get guests, it's easy. It's like, People recommend, hey, you need to talk to this person. And I did the research. I look at them. I see what they got going on in the community. Does it match up with what I'm doing? And then I meet with them. I say, hey, this is what this is what I got going on. This is what my story. And they and I want them to know more about me before I talk to them. Have you listened to my pod? Have you what stories really you that you took to? And if they've done their homework, then I'm all about talking with them and we can go ahead and do it. Now with COVID. It's a little bit harder. So what I do normally do is I do my research, due diligence, and then I give them, I frame some questions. I give like give them about ten about ten questions that I frame so they know which direction I'm going in, and they cannot be lost on the podcast. So we have a good stream of conscience. We're not all over the board where we're like oh, A over here, Z over here. We're straight going straight down stream of conscience, and it's not going to be getting the listener lost. Nothing being nothing worse than a listener like. 
what the hell is going on? They just talked about something else over here. And You're something explaining else. my show there, buddy. <laughs> that's so, that's, so, that, so that's what I do, man. I, I, you know, and it, I, I learned this on my own and I taught myself how to, I mean, taught myself how to do things. I bought all this equipment and I had a guy by the name of Four Stack, shout out to him. He was an audio guy. He was like, I'm going to show you how to edit. I'm going to show you how to let's get, get your sound levels up. And uh, shout out to another young lady by the name of Stephanie, who was like, I'm going to show you how to edit this also. So I had two different people who, learned, who knew how to edit. That's what they went to school for. So that was shout out to them. And then once I got that up together, I had another young lady by the name of Sienna who got my website up. Now the website even going up. And that's been hitting hard. A lot of people been looking at my website, looking at how legit are you, how legit the podcast. Because a lot of people in the beginning were like, you a podcast. Who listens to podcasts? What's that about? You know, I'm not, sorry, I'm not Joe Rogan. Sorry, I'm not, you know, some, I'm not knocking the big ones, but you know, I'm not, like you said, I'm not, I'm not being negative. I'm not being controversial. Well, it's I'm the same thing. Every, everybody tries to be like somebody. Everybody tries to be like, I'm going to be like Joe. I had some dude say that he was going to be on Joe Rogan. His goal was by be on 2024. I was like, I hope you know that Joe Rogan really just talks to people that, you know, he knows or is like friends with. So it's like, it's not like you're randomly just going to get a pop up on there. But I mean, I've done things that I never thought I, would be possible. I've had famous comedians on here, but I don't want to turn it into like a whose show brags about whatever. But I, I mean, it's a factor of, the reason why I'm like, like you kind of said, which got me and you know, my immediate answer to it was it's just conversation because I don't, I'm not an interviewer. I will never, I, I don't have focus specific topics. I don't make a list like you. I like to go all over the board. I like to go random because it's just, I'm trying to give you like the conversation that you would get at like a bonfire or something where like, we're not going to focus on specific topics. We could just talk about whatever and vibe and see where it goes. It's really just to show people that there's an ability for two people to have a conversation without it going to straight politics or something somebody taking a knife to somebody's throat or a box cutter, depending on what you prefer to use. Um, but like <laughs> you can sense, like, I think what really probably is the same for you is the same for me when we're looking for a guest is the fact that when you sense out the not being genuine factor, I get so many people like, how do I get on this so I can get the interview so I can do this? I'm like, but you haven't listened to the show. Why don't you listen to the show and see if you're actually still interested? Then eventually I did listen already. I was like, okay, cool. So you're cool with the whole like uh, part where we do, um, you know, guess who, you know, who's your favorite celebrity crush? Yeah, yeah man, I love that part. All right. Yeah. I don't fucking do that in my show. Right, right, right. <laughs> because that's how, that's how you got to get people. That's how you get people, man. That's exactly what you do. Cause I love that. You have to be smart and spontaneous. Understand, you got to understand what I'm doing. You know, um, I had, it's funny, when I first started, just kind of like you're saying, people were like, no, this one, this, now this one hurt. I had a person who was in Baltimore who's pretty popular as far as schooling and schooling and schooling, like education and things of that nature, who has programs, has their own business. And I reached out to that person. I said, hey, you know, I have a podcast. I'd love to give your, your perspective to my audience about, you know, education, school systems, and how the money's traveled. Because I don't know. It. I really don't know that. This person responded to me, I'm so busy for the whole year. I don't have time for it. I love those answers. And, um, you know, to this day, this person doesn't realize that they've inspired me. They've, they have inspired me. They, they, lit, they, lit, they lit a match under me because, you know, you're too busy. Okay. But you can tweet every 10 minutes. You can tweet and do whatever you want to do, which is that's to each his own. But that inspired me, man. That inspired me to work harder because when it's times that, you know, if you say, for instance, says I get bigger or whatever it may be, I'm not really, I'm doing it for, I love it. I enjoy it. But I look back at what that person said to me and I hurt more than anything. Cause I was like, Hey, I'm a Baltimore person. You're a Baltimore person. We're in the same game. I, I want to help education. You're helping education. I think you'd be beneficial for my audience. No, I don't have time. I'm busy for the next six months. Wow. Wow. But then, you know, now, so that, so that would say, so that inspired my, that inspired one day, that was my first thing that inspired me. Second thing was um, last year, a certain publication in Baltimore came out with the best podcast in Baltimore last year. And it came out and I was so upset because I was like, they're not to knock them, but they're pretty much turnkey. They're, they're an institution. They can get any person they want. So how are you going to have them win best podcast of Baltimore? You know what I mean? They, 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 they can call anybody and anybody will come and come do their thing. So that, that inspired me also to get better at what I do. 
and work harder and develop more of a, you know, a storyline and things like for people to understand. And then when this year came around, I was nominated for Best of Baltimore for Baltimore, by the Baltimore Sun for Best Podcast. I actually ended up winning, it, winning, winning that award, which is an amazing feat. I've only been in the game for like a year and three months when I found out for the podcast. And that was, that was one of my first goals, was to win that award. Now that's that, that, that check off my list. Now I have the next goal. I want that person to come to me and say, hey, I want to be on your podcast because you're doing big things in Baltimore. That's what I want. Because that inspires me. It's that, a good you know feeling. What, I've, that, been, that, you, I've, 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 I've reached out to a, a few people and then they've either ignored me or one dude lied to me about a family issue and then went and did a YouTube live video for his mm. channel. And then I saw that and I was like, nope, not happening. And then eventually... Um, after reaching like close to, you know, after he passed the thousand follower mark or something, he turned around, he's like, Oh, Hey man, you know, I have time to do your show. And I'm just like, sorry, man. I same rules for everyone. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what you are. There's two things that'll deny me ever or make me deny you from ever being on my podcast. One is if you lie to me and two is also, if you ask about my analytics, if you ask about my analytics, you can go fuck yourself it's not it's just a factor of if you're only doing it because you're looking at somebody's attention you're looking at someone's social standing then you're not you're not interested in it you're just want to be on there to promote and do all this stuff and it's like i get it i give you time to promote your show that's fine but at the same time i still want to have a conversation with you i mean i don't just randomly walk up to someone and go hey check out this no, 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 no. don't keep dropping it there are times i will admit I am in a conversation. I'm like, yo, I just podcasted with someone and they were mentioning that, but I will say that, but I won't say the name of my show. And then I feel like an asshole. I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't mean to keep saying that, but literally what you said is exactly what they said. And I like what you just said. And can we talk about this? Cause I you just opened a can of worms right there, man. You just did. Wait, hold on. How do you, when we say can of worms, do we mean actual worms? Or do we mean sour worms, like the gummy worms? Sour ass worms. All sour right. ass worms, like nasty ones. I'm, How do you feel about when you see people on Instagram that are fellow podcasters? I just got a thousand followers. I just got fifteen hundred followers. How do you feel about that? I'm curious because I have I have strong opinions on that. I am happy that they did that but i don't like the way that a lot of them are getting their followers and it's one thing Preach. i really don't like about podcasters when they do this is the fact that they go and they follow everybody that person has as followers and then they unfollow them once they follow back that gets me because i'll click on a profile where i reach out to a random person and then i see a, like oh like this guy I just had him on he follows me and then like a, not even a day later it'll be like oh followed by and then it's like eight others that i know and i'm like Oh, bro, you're following all the people I'm following, trying to grab an audience. I'm like, that's just cheap. But I mean, if they like your show, then go ahead. But it's just like every podcaster does that. I'm like, damn. You know, it's funny because I look at Twitter. This is, and that's why I always tell people Twitter is the devil's playground. And I, there's numerous podcasters that I follow. And I, and I listen to majority of people's shows. I, I give everybody a chance to listen to them once or twice. And they get, oh, I got a thousand followers. Oh, I have 2,000 followers. Okay, that's great. That's a beautiful thing. You have 5,000 followers. Perfect. That's a beautiful thing. Um, a young lady who was on my show, her and I talked about that. It's kind of like shopping. You have 5,000 people following. Uh, let's go old school. Toys R Us, okay? Toys R Us. They sell Honda. Ouija boards. They yes. sell Ouija boards. Yes, they do. They, they do. That's insane. Out of, <laughs> out of 5,000 people, how many people really shop at Toys R Us? I'm going to guess 264. Probably about, about 200 people. Okay. So when I look at people who have, I just got 2,000 or 1,000 followers, I ask them, what is your return? What is your ROI on that? I don't say it to them, but I'm thinking to myself, what is your return on investment on that? Because if you're telling me you got 1,000 followers, that means you have 1,000 downloads each episode. That means you're going to have two or 3,000 episodes, or maybe let's be honest, 5,000 downloads a week. That's what you're getting. If you have a thousand followers, you know, they, they're telling each other friends, but I know you're not getting that. <laughs> I know, but, and that's why I just, I don't, I never, you'll never see me brag on how many downloads I have. You'll never see me brag how many followers I have. You'll never see me having it because I think those things are personal and you can celebrate at certain times, but you certainly celebrate with your family and friends, you say in your personal page, like you said, hey, you know, I'm doing really well. My, I'll say in general, 
hey, I'm having the great numbers this week. I have all these brand new followers, but I'll never get specific and say, I'm 60 followers away from a thousand. <laughs> that, that annoys me. That, Cause that means you're screaming to the high heavens. I need more people or I think, go ahead. I think, I think one thing that really gets me is like, if somebody says like something about an episode, like that wasn't a good episode, which I mean, I've probably had one where it was like a little bit more of information rather than comedy or something. But I mean, I was interested in knowing that doesn't really offend me. Like you can offend me. That's fine. But don't offend my guests mostly because like you just denied like that person's first time probably being on a podcast wanting to talk. I mean, a lot of the people, like all the faces, I remember every conversation from all the way back in the beginning. I've been lucky enough that I've had a guest on and then a generation guest. So their mother came on or mm -hmm. their dad came on or I got their son on or something. And it was having two generations on there, which was amazing because like, like for instance, I'll shout her out, Angie Breyers. Her son was on when I first started doing these over the computer. And I remembered everything about what uh, we said in a podcast and then, you know, I talked to her and it was like, she was like, how'd you remember that? I was like, I remember all these conversations cause I'm actually fucking here. I'm not on my phone. I don't want to be there and do that. I want to be in this moment with you and I want to see where we can take this thing. And I think Joe Rogan said it best. I know I'm not going to preach Joe Rogan. So don't worry <laughs> unless you want to do MDMT or DMT. Um, he said that if it starts getting boring for you, it's going to be boring for the audience. You know, a lot of people can sit here and just preach their life stories and want to talk, 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 make it fun for you and make it more engaging as well. Like for me, I like to crack a lot of jokes. I like to ask questions. I still want you to get your point across as well. And I think that's all, that's really, it's all that's needed out there. Just be freaking genuine. I, I like that. Everything you're saying, I love it, man. Every, I mean, that's why we're vibing right now. It's a great conversation. Um, like I said, honored to have you on the show. I mean, I, like, I, rare, I never go on anybody else's show, but I just like how you vibe. And when you and Rob are going back and forth, I love that. Because I know Rob. So I'm like, and Rob, you know, his, his podcast is wild. He got some wild stuff, which I love it. But again, you and I are vibing. We're having a great conversation. And I love what you, your thoughts are. That's how a podcast should be. Having a conversation, just you and I. You know, and I like that you say you remember everything you had with, your, with all your people that you were interviewed. I like that. That's, that shows a passion. It shows a love. That shows that you care about what your work is. You're not just pumping out podcasts, but podcasts and podcasts and not giving grass ass, you know? I like that. Like, like well, it's like you, when so. I see a like on a photo of mine, for instance, I, when I look at that profile, I look at that person because they probably have been on my podcast and I see their face in my head. I'm like, that's them. You know, I, I ask everybody, how are they doing? How are you keeping up? Like, is everything going? Like I was trying to keep up with everybody during quarantine and all this stuff to make sure everybody was okay. Feeling it out if people needed to talk and stuff. And I think it's a factor of like, it's really not hard to be a genuine person um, and really care. But I think for a lot of people, we either get it way too easy or it's the factor of life is too damn hard to even make a scratch for yourself when you try and do things the right way, which is why, like, I thought it was important when I saw your podcast highlighting all these people that are doing something. There's the people that'll, that'll, that'll comment on your thing and be like, yo, you should interview me. I'm a number one fire mixtape in the world. And it's like, no, you're not probably not. But I think it's when you actually go to somebody and you see the work that they've done and you've asked them, Hey, would you be interested in coming on here? More of the factor of you're doing something and you're not spending money. You're not trying to throw your best saying you're the best in the world. You're having this huge inflated ego that turns me off immediately. You come at me with an inflated ego. I don't want to talk to it only because you're not going to be genuine. And I've had an episode like that before where someone came on the podcast and called himself a hustle God. And I said, stop. People listening are going to hear that word and do exactly how you just did where they laugh. So I want you to explain to me what the form of hustle means. And then she's been, I'm trying to do the best I can with the amount of time I have. And it got really deep and it got really clear. And the audience was able to connect with her. I was like, when you try and connect with people that are setting themselves so high up onto a pedestal or talking about everything they have, we live in a world of comparisons. The same reason why this podcast isn't going to go like the one I did with Rob, because me and Rob, like it's a comedian vibe. Me and you, it's more of a motivational. It's more of a feeling. It's a more of a like, let's, you know, the world's kind of a little bit messed up because nobody can get ahead when they should be getting everything. And it comes from a factor of 
we live in a world that's constantly about comparisons, always about comparing mm-hmm. followers, comparing cars, comparing shirts, comparing clothing, comparing looks. I just want the sweatpants confidence. When I go to the store, nobody gives a fuck if you're wearing sweatpants or not, or like that. Everybody wants Johnny Depp money. You know what I mean? But I'm talking about, it's going to take time and it's going to take work and not to turn this into a motivational thing. But the whole factor of is when you sit there and you listen every single day to a song by a rapper who has a million cars or all this other type of stuff, or you constantly look at someone else's stuff and go, why don't I have that? Why don't I have that? And then you feel like shit. You're not going to progress any farther. You might, you know, it might get your ass kicked into work, but what do you really want to do? I'm fucking 22. I don't have any clue what I want to do with my life. I'm fucking lost and every day is a damn struggle, but you couldn't tell that from a podcast because it's not, it's like I said, it's not about me. It's about you. It's about our conversation. It's about, I just had a genuine chat where I'm going to fucking run off this thing and I'm going to be like, that was awesome. I'm going to be punching the sky and running out in the street and stuff. Like that's that connection. That's the energy that we all need when we go out into the world. It's crazy you say that. Um, I will tell you a quick little story about myself. So after um, this one institution crowned another place to be the best podcast in Baltimore area, and then after I fell into this hole six months into it, seven months, six, six or seven months into it. Kind of funny, funny you say that. And I fell into the comparison thing. I did. I fell into that trap. And I was like, how are they getting 2,000 followers? And I'm still on like 500. <laughs> you know, I, I'm like, and, I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm pumping out a podcast once a week, man, at that point. And content solid and i'm like people are like you're doing a great keep on doing it and i almost quit i almost quit the podcast i almost quit i was like you know what i don't understand and like you said it's all about compare this is how society is comparison what you got what you got and what happened was i had got a letter not like a, like a message instagram message from unlikely person that i didn't know who they were and they said keep on doing what you're doing you're making an impact. My daughter sat in the parking lot and listened to your podcast. Now, her daughter is in middle school or going like going to high school this year, I guess. But to keep the attention span of a you know of a young adult or a kid at that point blew my mind. And I just couldn't believe that I was making that impact. And I almost quit. Like like you said, I almost quit because I saw other people who were in the podcast game getting all these, you know, people following them and this and this and that. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And like you said, it takes time. It takes time to build a report. You know, when people follow, like I used to follow, follow, follow back thing. I like to look at what the podcast is all about before I follow back to you. To be honest, I want to know. I want to know. Like you got your homeboy who does the high serial thing. Is that what it's called? David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your high serial, I was looking at him like, oh, this could be unique and different outside of my spectrum you know let me check this stuff out you know because that, that was me back in my college days so i kind of like was like damn but now i have a kid you know what i mean that's almost two years old so now i'm i'm a little different on how i approach things i'm way different you know uh and i found that a lot of my i now i know my target audience i know who listens and now people are like i'm happy i stayed on man i really am and rob lee and i had a conversation about that on his pod i almost quit but like you said we always comparing ourselves to other things. And I'm like, I'm, I'm too damn old to be peer pressure on a damn podcast. This is not even my, this is a hobby. And I almost, like you said, if you don't like what you're doing, then I almost quit. But then when I got that message, I was like, I'm staying on. And it motivated me. And it motivated me. And then getting that denial, that motivated, pushed me, pushed me, pushed me. And I was like, I'm going to make this a damn good podcast. I'm going to make sure people listen to it. And then, you know, I want to make sure we highlight Baltimore City, the community, the people who are working their tail off to make sure that kids have somewhere to go. I have one episode with Baltimore Stallions. Awesome episode. Um, these guys are my cousins. They have a league. They have a team that they tutor kids, young African-American black kids in West Baltimore. Now, you probably heard of West Baltimore. They always talk about how dare terrible it is, how trashy it is. West Baltimore was known as people for the TV audience. That's where the wire is located, okay? So he give you a quick background. But he takes these kids, picks them up for football games, takes them to practice. They got to do study halls. And these are stories that people aren't talking about. You hear about all the crime, but you don't hear people on the grind, on the ground, working hard, 
making sure these kids are successful. If you listen to the podcast, he talks about how now the starting the first class that started like eight years ago, where it may have been, all these guys are in D1 colleges now playing football. That's a success. But we're not talking about that. We'd rather talk about Joe Blow getting shot, shot in the corner. Let's talk about the things that's successful so we can bring light and you know what? Have a charity and throw money in their way. Say, hey, we, you're inspiring. That's inspiring conversation. Let's help these guys out over here. And that's what it's all about, man. Inspiring, like you said, motivational. And that's what my podcast is about. You're not going to hear me ripping anybody, talking shit on anybody. That's not how I roll. I'm too old for that. I don't got time for all that. You know, I'm just, like I said, just being positive. And I, again, I honor and pleasure to be on your pod, you know, just my second interview outside my realm. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm enjoying this vibe because you're real people. And I like that. Yeah. I mean, I see so much, like, I guess on, um, I guess not being genuine in the world. And it just really kind of sucks because I'm like, I've definitely from doing the start of this thing, like, I'll be honest, it's definitely aged me beyond my years. I have a lot more information. If you look at my first episode compared to where I'm at now, my brain thinks totally different. It's not necessarily a good thing. Um, mostly because like you start realizing like a lot of people, what they're really out there for. And it's like, you start going into the world and, but that's why I do a one-on-one because you get the actual authenticity of the person. You have to use your real name. So there's no, you know, my name's dark, whatever saber or something. There's none of that. So you're going to give me legit answers. Um, but like you start noticing like what really always got me was the, like, I call it like a home goods donation, mostly because like, you notice when you go to like a home goods, you go to a Ross, you go to something, you want to donate uh, the rest of that change to a charity. So it's like two cents. And then you go, sure, why not? And then they grab a bell and they go to ring it. I stopped the person from ringing a bell because that lets everybody in the store know that you donated and nobody knows the exact price though. So they're clapping, thinking you donated five or fifteen dollars. You donated a penny. You're just doing it for the satisfaction. Everything's got to be approved by somebody. Got to do this. There's a guy that I used to play basketball with when I mean a few years ago, who ended up becoming this body build or not bodybuilder, bodyguard type thing. He had guard celebrities or all this stuff. And I'm like, you can't fight for shit. First of all, I don't know how you're guarding people, but he put on Facebook and he's all about social media. Back when we played basketball, he would let people know we're playing basketball at one o'clock in the morning at outside at the hoops at the rec center. And I'm like, why are you doing that? So people know, man, well, people know what, so they can follow us. I'm like, what the fuck? And then, um, so he, during the COVID thing, he donated pizzas, a lot of pizzas to a hospital. Now you can do that without posting on social media, but no, he made them take like pictures of it, send it to him. He made sure that he took pictures outside. Everything was picture, 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 picture of every fucking moment. Could recount it like a fucking movie. And I'm like, what? like you're doing it for the attention. Everybody giving them the compliments. And that's why when people start complimenting me, I'm like, I'll edit this out. I'll do whatever because I don't like the ego stroke everybody's all about the ego stroke. You're like, I was like a little dirty devil. Eh, let me stroke ego. I'm like, I don't like it because then that's when you start becoming a dick. And that's when I always like to say, <clears throat> keep the mentality of Bill Gates. That man has billions of dollars and he won't spend over $5 on a shirt. That guy is the, that's, that's the money mentality I want to live by. I have money in the bank, but I still like the cheapness of myself where I'm like, Oh, it's $2. That's a lot of cash. It, it, you know, a lot of these guys are about the clout, you know, it's all about clout. That's what they call it now. That's what the young kids call it, clout. And I'm, I've never been about that. And, you know, it's kind of like, uh, what was it? I think it was it Tupac said, <laughs> one, of, one of many Tupac quotes, real G's move in silence. And um, that, and I think that's very, I think that's what we go through. And my, my friends and I do, we do things that we're making moves that people don't even know what's going on behind the scenes. And that's what it's about. You know, I don't need to, just again, like I said, not to get into all what's going on in the world, but you know, we had everything going on and people screaming on social media rah, 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 and they're doing their speeches. And I got people yell at me, man, man. It was it was tough. People were yelling at me saying, Aaron, why don't you say something on your podcast? Aaron, come on, you're a social you're a social warrior. You would, and I was like, I don't need to do that. I'm doing things behind the scenes. I don't need to tell you what I'm doing. You know, um, and that's not I'm not about Whose chest is big enough? Who can say it, you know? And, and that's not how I roll, man. And that's the lead into my new season, sorry. So lead into my new set, my new season, that's what I'm doing. Um, you're gonna hear my, you're gonna hear what I 
think and what I think was going on in the world through the podcast and through my guests. That's not going to, you'll hear me say little things, but you'll know why I was quiet for so long. It'll explain everything. And that's what it's all about. And um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited. This is going to be a good season. And I, 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 I don't, again, I'm not bragging about what got coming on, but I'm excited because a lot of people gave me flack. Again, Aaron, you're a black man. You got to, you got to talk about what's going on. I'm like, okay, just because your podcast wanted to, and everybody like, 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 retweet, retweet, retweet. Okay, that, that's cool. That's good for you. That's I not get, for me. I get there's a race issue and I get all that. And that really sucks. But I've never, I mean, I was raised to not, obviously. I mean, my whole family's from Baltimore. I mean, some people even say, like, I had one person, another podcaster say I was anti-Latino. I was like, have you looked at my guest list? I have, I've had I've talked to them before. Like, it's not like I'm just talking to white people. There's multiple colors under my flag. And also I am fucking Mexican too. So that doesn't make any sense. Like I have a bit of a Cuban in me. So, okay. Um, but the whole factor is when stuff does, when people throw sand, people do this or do that. And it all comes down to a race issue where it goes hashtag black podcasters, hashtag this. That's awesome. I'm glad that's there, but it's also not helping the situation either. We're all fucking people. We're all living on this same giant earth. And I'm pretty sure, like I said, we all come together during a terrorist attack or nine 11 or something. We all came together during this pandemic and there was no color at one point. And then now we started breaking out of it and then it all started to rise. And it's because we spent way too much time inside, way too much time on these fucking devices. And these devices started showing us everything. Back in the day, you were confined to the news that was in your town or something maybe that you was on a computer, but you have this thing in front of your face 24 seven and they manipulate a lot of this stuff to make it their point of view. Now you're getting everything talking about how dangerous this thing is like, that wasn't the real situation. Did anybody actually look up that actual situation? Now, cop stuff aside, all that stuff aside, that was horrible what happened obviously, but that's an issue too with the factor of there are, we're not we're not checking the main points we're supposed to be checking the stuff we're supposed to be verifying is supposed to, we're supposed to be looking you should have more time to be a cop you should have to be actually thoroughly checked through there should be a severe background check i could never do it if you've ever seen <laughs> stanford prison experiment it is an amazing thing on Netflix, and they considered it failed. I studied that before the documentary on Netflix came out, and it was what happens when you give a person a position of power. So they would give 12 people cop uniforms and 12 people prisoner uniforms. They were all there volunteering. They were all making money. The whole point was just act your role. As soon as they walk in there, there were some people that are like, hey, man, you just sit down for me. And it was like, yeah, normal people, knowing that they're just in an experiment thing. They're not actual cops. The one dude started getting close to hitting somebody with a police baton and took the role way too seriously those are the motherfuckers that are the problem in the industry those are the guys that are like you you shouldn't have power you shouldn't because once somebody gives you power you start telling everybody what to do and that's an issue and that's when we start seeing a lot of this and it gets all manipulated into the way of it's everyone it's everyone and i'm in support of everybody because you're just a person to me you talking to me right now it's not about skin color it's not about this it's about you're telling me you're like you're telling me Aaron what you want to do what you enjoy doing you're talking about your podcast what's making you happy I've seen your fucking eyes light up is making me light up because I love it because I love seeing how you're so passionate about it and that's what I try and do with these conversations I mean we all have something that we're passionate about and it doesn't need to be violence all the time it just needs to be like where do you feel inside yourself is what's going on what's right where do you feel like you should be where do you want to be and how are we going to get there Hey, 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 I I'm here with I'm here with you. I'm I'm here with you, brother. I just tell people I live by day by day. I live I live for my son and my wife, man. And that's what it's all about for me, honestly, you know. And uh, you know, I, I do my nine to five work and I do this and I enjoy it. You know, I'm, i just turned forty, man. So I'm a little I'm I'm a little, I'm a little eighteen years on you. So you got a lot of like, you got a lot of good times ahead of you, man. You got a lot of good times ahead of you. But I, I will tell you that it's crazy, just the podcast industry, just as a whole. I've learned so much in the last year and a half, and I'm thankful that I have a platform to help and expand and teach people about other people that are just, maybe they're, we're not different. We're all the same at the end of the day. We're not that different. We are not that different. Um, and if I, if I can help an organization, if I can help an entrepreneur starting a business, if I can help them get more customers, clients, so be it. That's what it's all about. I feel like, you know what? This is myself giving back to society. 
and that's what my podcast is about. And I, I really enjoy it. And, you know, I, I, I can't believe I'm still doing it right now. It's enjoyable. Like you, I like what you said about Joe Rogan. He said about, you know, if you enjoy it, you're going to enjoy it. If you don't, this is going to be shown. And I really do. And I really enjoy what I'm doing. And I can, I appreciate it. Again, I know you don't like to see you saying this, but I appreciate you having on my, having, you, having me on the show. I really do. I don't go on other people's shows. I've told you that. And I said, I don't do it. And there's a reason why. I, and I'm just, and I just vibe to what you, like I said, when you and Rob Lee were talking, I was like, this guy's all right. This guy's all right. And even Rob Lee and I spoke about it. And again, I'm very weird about it, but this has been a great conversation. I will tell you. And, and you are crushing it. You're doing your thing. And I can't wait hey, to I do a crab feast with yeah, you. I can't wait to get down and spit, be spitting and eating nasty and, you know, having a beer like in my hand or vinegar or, in the cups, man. Yeah, or butter in a cup or something. I'm, I'm very excited for that to happen. It probably won't happen until next year, but that's how life is right now. Unfortunately. I'm just ready to break into some crabs, dude. I've been freaking dying for it like all this time. Nobody's selling any. So everybody's got quarantine. I'm like, all right, I know there's people crabbing. So stop. Stop saving it for yourself right now because I'm tired of going off to the end of the dock with some chicken necks trying to get it myself and I'm getting pinched half the damn time because I don't have a net. I'm using pliers or something. Oh, well, you know, after we've done this, I'll, I'll, I got I got a plug, a.k.a. if anybody doesn't know what plug is, I got a hookup. That's what the plug is, the hookup. I found a guy randomly on like this Facebook website, which I, I yeah, Facebook is Facebook, but, and he was like, come to this location. I was like, what the hell, what the hell am I about to go to? So I drive out to his location. This dude had bushels on top of bushels. Like, what you need? I said, man, I found I found the gold at the end of the rainbow. From the black market guy had, crab feet. Yes, man, he had ones, male ones, males twos, females larges. I'm sitting there like, man. I was like, let me get this up on them. <laughs> and he was like, and he's like, I'm here all the time. And like, that was, that was for my birthday, man. I got those. And I was like, my man. So now I know where he is. And the price is right. I mean, they're, they're you know, they're, they're uh, live crabs, but ain't nothing like coming home, putting them bad boys on the pot. Have you ever I, had a bad live crab experience? You know what? I've never had one pinch me. Never had one, man. I've okay. So I went when I was <laughs> when I was like twelve years old. My dad got a bushel of crabs and they're all alive. And when we got to this campsite, he thought our his buddy had told him that he had set out all the plot supplies for him to be able to boil these crabs and cook them or whatever. Um, nothing was set up. So the, the little bushel thing that they come in, the little crate, ended up breaking. And now we have dozens of crabs just crawling across the floor. So what happened was I jump up on a picnic table. My dad's like, get up there because I'm wearing flip-flops and I'm in shorts. You know, I'm like ready to, you know, munch down on some crabs. It was a hot-ass day. And he's grabbing pliers, needle-nose pliers, and trying to pick up crabs by like just doing that. And he's getting pinched left and right and throwing them in there. But let me tell you something. When we cook those crabs – there was no better feeling than breaking off those legs and eating that mustard out of the crab, dude. I'm telling you. It's funny. So you'll laugh at this. So my neighbors, this is the crazy, this is crazy. So I bought a whole bunch of female, females uh, for my birthday weekend. I like them. I think they're sweeter. And my neighbor had never had male, ne females. Never had them. Never had them. So I, I steamed up a book. Like I had a half bushel. I gave them a dozen. And they're like, Aaron, what, what's that orange stuff and what's that stuff in there? I was like, yeah, you, I was like, y'all eat crabs? So, well, we only we never get those in ours. I said, those are the females. Oh, we didn't, we didn't know what to do with those. I said, man, that's the best part. The orange row and the mustard, come on. They, and they had never have females, never. Some people don't, well, some people don't do it because they like keep them in there so they can yeah. breed and make more of them. I'm like, look, <laughs> the crab's a crab, man. At one point, somebody's going to catch that if you throw it back. So I'm like, I might as well enjoy at least a little bit of it. Preach, 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 brother, preach. Now, if I had to ask you, what do you want out of life? Like, what, what inside yourself right now, you're going to do it in a reflection here. What do you want, like, the next year or the next couple of years? Or where do you see yourself being? Honestly, man, just being healthy, man. Um, being healthy, uh, Good, good health and good, you know, good health, family stable, my son, you know, doing well, family for me, man. It's all family on a podcast front. Just keep doing what I'm doing, you know, just, just keep on giving out good, good content for people. That's all I want is good content on people to enjoy listening to our podcast. You know, um, I don't I mean, we all inspire. We could be Joe Rogan, but 
I'm not going to, I'm not having delusions of grandeur. You know, I, I understand how life works, but good health, my family, my son, my parents, I mean, and the podcast keep on rolling and people keep on enjoying it. That's where I want to be the next year. I mean, that's what it boils down to because health is very important. And um, I really believe, I really believe in that. I really do. You think um, you want people to know you as Aaron, not, you don't want to be Joe Rogan. You want to be Aaron. You want to well, be. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 You want, to yeah, pro- yeah. you want to produce your podcast and you want to see it grow um, mostly because, I mean, you even know getting a review, getting somebody that comments or says something and all those stories you're telling me of a listener or something, that feels fucking good, man. Even if it's like it's never going to be a thousand people saying that maybe. Like for me, I never worry about if it's going to be millions of people saying that. Just that one person having a good time and writing something from the heart. Like thank you for, you know, I had a, I had one, like the anxiety person I was mentioning before. Mm-hmm. They – I mean, a heartfelt speech. They're an amazing writer. Like we all have forms of talking. Some people can talk, some people can write, some people can do this and it's all form of expression. But I mean, a paragraph that brought to my fucking tears, man, where I was like, damn, I was like, all I did was talk to you. And he was like, that's what you did though. That's what you did. That stuff, the stuff that you'll get, you're getting the same thing when somebody's listening, like, holy shit, thank you so much. That means enough to keep you going. And that's what it seems like happiness is. You said you hit it right in the head again. I just want I want people to enjoy what I'm doing. Understand how much work we're putting in to put a good, a good product out for, for people to listen to, and and that's all that matters at the end of the day. And I, I like I said, like you said, how do I look at guests? I, I, I bet I still bet them. I bet them. You know, are you are you like are you in here just for the likes? Are you in here just to bump your own podcast? You know, what's your whole agenda? You know, and for me, man, I just enjoy life man and i like telling people stories man there's so many great stories that are out there that people need to hear and think about it. you and i just talking i just met you for the first time seeing you for the first time today we're vibing having a great conversation you know i'm gonna walk away from this like i'm glad i did this you know my wife was like are you going are you sure i'm like yeah i got a good feeling about it and um uh, and i'm glad i went off that vibe and i'm again this has been a great experience i got two more questions about baltimore and then we can wrap it up Okay, go ahead. One, do you like ketchup on your eggs? Absolutely not. Good man, good man. Coming in strong, coming in strong on the second. Now, on the second one, where do you stand on how you say the word Monday? Monday. Say the next day. Tuesday. Now say. Now say your governor. Governor. No, say your governor. Hogan. Okay. I got made fun of for having a Baltimore accent when I said I'm from Ocean City and then there was that that came that, out. That like, that that that's a well you know you know what people call me in Baltimore, right? It's not Aaron. It's Aaron. 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 Yeah, I was going to do that when I introduced you, but I made sure I corrected that. Damn Aaron, it. Aaron, you Aaron. <laughs> Cuz people say like Monday, Tuesday. No, no, I don't have that Baltimore. I don't have that. I don't have that. I used except you quick background. I used I was born and raised in Baltimore when I was younger. Then I moved to Dallas, Texas, Ohio, and then moved to New York. So I lost that whole accent when I left. When I left and when I, when I came back in 05, I still haven't regained it. I mean, but I know you're talking about like a certain ocean. We're going to Ocean City and um, ocean. ocean City and Merlin. Earn. Like Merlin. I'm used to people saying Earn, Earn, and my wife was like, "Who are they talking to?" I'm like, that, "That's me." It's with <laughs> two like, you know, not two A's. Yeah, like I always laugh at. I said when I was in college, my I would. Come down with my Baltimore family, earn, earn. But when I go back to college, my Long Island friends would be like, Aaron, Aaron. Aaron. It'd be the Aaron. So it was always different ways how it was pronounced. I'm just Aaron, that's all I am. It's like a fun. So it's always interesting. What about King Syrup? Back in the day, that was my that was my joint, man. Fuck, this man. Thing. My grandparents, they live in Baltimore. They live um my grandparents, uh my grandpa lives in Bel Air, and my grandma used to live by um the old uh Ravens training camp. You talking about uh, Westminster, Owens Mills, out that way? Yeah. And uh, they used to live, I mean, they used to live by Shorebird Stadium. They used to live in the city. That's where my dad grew oh, up. Oh, you talking about 30, you talking about 33rd, where the old, old baseball stadium used to be? Um, The old Purdue, or not Purdue, Shorebirds, not Shorebirds. Why am I saying fucking Shorebirds? Oreo Stadium. That, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, 10 minutes, I'm 10 minutes from there, brother. I'm literally 10 minutes ride from the, from the 
third, third, where the old stadium is located. It's one of my, uh, before my dad moved to Ocean City, like this is where I'm born and raised. He's born and raised in Baltimore. That's where my whole okay. dad's side of the family's from. But uh, yeah, King Syrup, man, I can't do it. Uh uh-uh. uh. I dumped that all over a thing of pancakes thinking it was like Buttersworth. It's not oh, at no. all. It is liquid oh, no. death. It's, it's diabetes. <laughs> it's diabetes in the jar. It's, That's what it it's is. It's medicine. <laughs> well, look, it's Aaron, diabetes, man. I appreciate you coming out and doing the podcast. Please plug your show, plug where everybody can find it at. Oh, I have one more question for you. Oh, God. Where's the best fries in Ocean City? If you say Thrasher, I'm asking you. you. I'm, I'm asking you. It's I don't not know. Thrashers. People love Thrashers because you can dump vinegar on it. But let me tell I'm you something. You. There is. What's that? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's called Luke something, but it has, they have these fries that they put Old Bay on and they're just enough crispy. I mean, it's good, but if you really want a good fry anywhere, I always recommend Royal Farms because those potato wedges. <laughs> oh, sweet Lord. That's a French fry is a potato wedge. <laughs> how about, how, have you ever had a Baltimore chicken box? I don't think I have. Oh man, we gotta get you back down here. You've been you've been you've been in the burbs too long, brother. A chicken box is the most delectable, delicious thing ever. It's four, four pieces of fried wings. So like kind of like Royal Farms, and they have regular French fries, or you can potato wedges, okay? You put hot sauce, ketchup, salt and pepper all on it, and you just crush it. All together, mix all together. It's it's a mess, and then you get a half and half. Just I call Can it. I get a biscuit. Liquid. Nah, man. No, nah, it's, it's four wings and four fries, and they put it in a box, and then you put hot, you put salt, pepper, hot sauce, and ketchup on it. Let me tell you something. After you eat that, you're going to sleep for like 20 minutes. You're going to take a nap. <laughs> I'm telling you. And then, and then you get, then you get the liquid diabetes. You get the half and half. Man, that that might save your soul, brother. You might, you might not want to go back to Ocean City My after God. having that. I love, I love that. I think everybody can kind of tell this is around lunchtime when we're recording this. <laughs> right, 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 right. So again, the plug, the pod, um, no picks after dark. It's on IG, Instagram. I have a website, uh, no picks after dark.com. Uh, if you do, if you type in no picks for dark podcast, it will still come up to the website. Uh, I I'm on Twitter and no picks after dark. I'm on I, uh, Facebook on the same thing. Um, you can find me. I have some cool stuff coming out very soon. New season coming up in pretty soon. I have cool merchandise coming out. Who does merch? I know. I'm doing merch now. I don't know how I even got in that game with that. So look out for that coming up. Um, it's going to be an exciting year. I told myself I'm going to just go, excuse my language, balls to the wall and make it happen this year. And uh, it's been doing going pretty well. So, again, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode of Out of the Blank Podcast and stay tuned for our next episode.